At Gamescom, I sat down with Bethesda's very own Pete Hines to give us the lowdown on this year's biggest game. It must feel good to be back at Gamescom as well. Uh, it is. This is a show I've, I've been to very a lot of times and uh, over the years, and it's always a great crowd. It's, it's honestly, it's amazing to like bump into fans I recognize oh, yeah. to see folks. Um, and honestly, to be back in person, you know, it's something we haven't gotten to do a whole lot of. And uh, you know, as, as Todd was just saying, you can really feel the energy from the fans, how excited they are, how much they're looking forward to it. It, it honestly, it, it makes it a lot of fun. Yeah, it's just, it's a really special place for that, I think. But so many of the fans that are here today and watching from home are just kind of waited with bating breath for what's to come for Starfield. But these last few days ahead of launch, what do they tend to look for, look like for the, you and for the rest of the team? Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, in some ways, it's probably the most difficult part of a campaign. <laughs> Uh, because number one, like you know how close it is. Number mm. two, the amount of work that our teams right now, uh, and, and shout out to all of those folks who, who are number one, crushing it, doing an amazing job oh, yeah. with, the, with the trailer at ONL last night and, and everything that's been a part of this campaign. They, they are working so hard. Um, and you're also just sitting here where you've now given the game to a bunch of people to press the influencers yeah. and you don't really know what they think or how they're feeling and so, we, it's a little bit helpless, so we try and focus on the things that we can control. And it, it, most of all, we're just so excited for next week and to get this into people's hands. I mean, I personally kind of love that confidence of being able to hand it off to press and, and reviewers and you know influencers fairly early for yeah. what most games marketing tends to do. Like to me, that speaks like we love what we've done with this game. It's now time for you guys to to really have a go with it. Yeah, and and if I'm being honest, like they're really. <laughs> There's really not an amount of time that I'm comfortable enough of like, now you've played enough mm. Starfield to get what this game is. Because yeah. like I'm at 150, 160 hours on my current playthrough and like, oh. yeah, I haven't even come close to do, like there is so much stuff I have intentionally not done. Um, it, it's it, like, we, t we try and tell everybody how big this game is mm. and the folks that are playing it like, one of the few things they will tell us is, yeah, you weren't kidding how big, like, I can't <laughs> believe how big it is. Like, yeah, it's content and explore, like, no matter how you want to play, there is so much for you to do in this game. You mentioned opening night live, and we'll talk about that in a sec, but I just kind of want to know why it was so important to bring the experience of Starfield that you have to this audience right here at Gamescom. I, I mean, for, for one thing, like, we, our games have always done really well in Germany. It's it's obviously, you know, it's a, a really well-known PC market, and we obviously came from being, a, you know, an indie PC developer and publisher before we were anything else. Um, but this audience and, and role-playing games and what, what they mean in Germany, it's a very popular genre, and, you know, across Elder Scrolls and, and Fallout, um, Bethesda Game Studios has got a really big um, following in this mm. territory, and, and for all the folks who come to Cologne who, who aren't in Germany, uh, and we just felt like this close to launch to try and do something special for them, uh, you know, to sort of surprise and delight and to just be here and, and to, you know, take pictures or have a conversation yeah. or whatever. Um, you know, we, we want to make sure that they, they feel as special as, as they are to us. It's cool for me to see that you've got that glass cabinet full of all the different Starfield paraphernalia. We've got the Series X console wrap, we've got the Constellation Edition watch, and that helps me feel at least like we're so tangible. It's like, it's right there. I can even like grab it. We're so close to launch. Plus it's really good like shopping for birthdays. Oh yeah. Oh, I want that, I need that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you've like, got the watch on already. Yeah. I'm jealous, trust uh, the, me. I <laughs> love the watch. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're really excited both for like how good the game is, but the way in which Xbox has supported us with, you know, console wraps and uh, like, the controller and the headset oh, is the beautiful. best piece of hardware. I like they are so good. I, I use them nonstop. Yeah. Uh, all, full credit to that team. But uh, across Xbox, the, the the way that they have stepped up and supported and amplified Starfield in in every way possible has been just awesome to be a part of. We're so pleased for all of the support that, that, that they've given yeah. us. You're just helping me dress my entire house in Starfield <laughs> stuff at this point, so you know, I'm, I'm happy enough as it is. Yeah, but absolutely. We did get to see quite a lot of Starfield. You had a new trailer last night at yep. opening night live. Todd came on stage to chat a bit more about what that opening sequence looks like that players can expect, but why don't you catch, up us, uh, catch us up more on the news of the day, really, for Starfield? Yeah, uh, I mean, first of all, I want to say, you know, I am, I am a few weeks away, whatever the number is, six or seven, from 24 <laughs> years at this company. Wow. That is the best trailer we've ever made, and, and I, I will have words with anybody who says otherwise. It is my favorite thing. I had absolutely nothing to do with that trailer, yeah. full disclosure. That is, that is my team. That is Aaron Losey's <laughs> team going out and making that happen, and 
Um, the Get your flowers, the, guys. The tone <laughs> that it hits, the way that it hits that feel of not just what it's like to play the game, but sort of the hopefulness, the, the lifting others up, I, I just, I think it's brilliant. Um, mm. But, you know, it, it's not just that. It's, hey, we, we've got wraps for your Xbox console, you know, something Xbox has never offered yeah. um, that look really great. Um, uh, you know, we've released a bunch of new wallpapers, that, uh, desktop wallpapers and phone wallpapers that have been made. Like, it's, we are now in the point, I, I said last night to the folks uh, at, after dinner, like, there is no emergency break anymore on this nope. launch, folks. Like, we're a go whether we're ready or not. <laughs> so everybody, like, make sure your seatbelt is fastened because this is happening and it's, you know, there are very few chances. Todd and I try and reinforce this to, to our respective teams as much as we can. You don't, you don't get many opportunities at, at a game like this. Um, ga uh, games of any kind, you know, is mm. a finite number for a, anybody in development or publishing. But for something like this, for as special as it is, for as long as I've been here and to see what these different launches are, you can tell when something special is happening. Mm. And I think Starfield is that. And, you know, I really uh, have tried to emphasize to, to our teams, like, amidst all of the hard work, like, please find time to enjoy this. Because you never yeah. know when you get another chance to be a part of something as special as this. Talking about the stewardship you and Todd have over this team to bring something like Starfield to players out there, and it often gets described as, oh, it's an open world game, but that feels like a bit of a disservice because it's not just the one world, it's thousands that we can explore, and it's a sprawling open world experience across like a real good portion of the galaxy. I mean, what is it like to actually have to lead a team on such, such an endeavor as that, where it's grand scale that we've seen and all the detail as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, as you as you all have seen, as you've watched how we've talked about Starfield, it, it really required us to push ourselves in terms of how do you get the rest of the world to wrap its head around a game of this size and scope? I mean, it is literally, it feels when you're playing it almost like there are a bunch of different games mm. inside of one game and I get to decide how much time I want to spend in a way that you haven't really seen in a Fallout or Skyrim. I mean, those things are still, you know, oh, I can spend all my time just picking flowers in the Elder yeah. Scrolls. Like, yes, you can, but it doesn't feel as as wholly different as, like, the entire space game that exists, mm -hmm. the entire live on a planet, just, like, the freeform exploration, the combat, the which factions taking sides, the player... Tr it's um, it's just amazing to see it all, how it all comes together, but explaining that to folks in a way that is digestible um, you know, it's how, how you end up with something like Starfield Direct, which, I mean, it's basically a feature film that we <laughs> created just to explain to folks and to talk to folks about, not just explain what the game is, but do it in a way that I just thought was really authentic and hearing from the people making it, how they think about mm. both creating it, how they think about playing it, and, and seeing the way that that resonated with players, I think was really, was really special. One thing that really grabs me, I think, is the love that's being poured into like Radiant Quest systems and just allowing those new and unique experiences for people to have, no matter where they are in the galaxy, whether they are just flying around in space, whether they are out there just maybe mining some rocks or mm -hmm. looking at new fauna, flora, et cetera. It's, it's a really cool way to involve them in new stories that yeah. they perhaps weren't searching for, but now they're being like collided into and it's just juicy. You want well, to and, and dive then, And then, because we made an irresponsibly large game, <laughs> game, we take it to another level that that I think, and this is one of the things I'm, I'm looking for, we've seen it ourselves. Like, I was just talking to a couple of folks from our Benelux office who were like, you know, they've both played, you know, about the same amount of time, like, you know, 40 hours or 60 hours, but their experiences were like, we didn't do any of the same things at all, like, not even close, and just be with that and then the whole like locations aren't the same for every person like what you yeah, and I find absolutely. going to explore this planet I can't just tell you you should go here and land here and find this like yeah that might not be there for you like you get to find and have an experience that truly feels like like your own in a way that that I think folks are going to really enjoy and appreciate yeah I mean we got a little bite of that in the Starfield Direct like you mentioned I mean Jamie Mallory literally coming out and saying, oh, well, hold my sandwich, I'm, I'm grabbing them all here. And it's just, it does speak to that unique way that every player can tackle whatever situation they do come across, or even just back down to character creation. And that's that jumping off point of deciding, here's what I'm gonna start off as. I have no idea where that journey is gonna take me and how it might change me as a player, me as a character in this game. And it's all really fascinating, but what are the sorts of way that you tend to play it? I mean, I know you've, you've poured in some time now, but... Well, uh, look, when, I'm, when we're in this phase and like leading up, I, I don't 
I don't play like I would like I don't play like I'm about to when I get right. back home where like okay now I'm yeah. gonna start like like this is yeah. Pete's you, you character. got a job to do right yeah now. <laughs> up to this point it's been Bethesda's character and sort of the way I've approached it is sort of testing I mean I've been doing this for a long time I've been interacting with our players playing Bethesda game studio stuff for a long time so we know mm. how they think and I, I talked to Jamie after E3 and she's like I, I don't get this like why is this such a thing and I said Jamie what you did is you tapped into the like the silliness factor yeah. that like you sort of tend to forget like you talk about Starfield and yeah but it's still fun mm. like it's supposed to be about fun and you put your finger sort of right on the pulse of the kind of nonsense that our players love to get up to because we make a game that is about freedom right like yeah. we embrace chaos we give players more freedom than I think in a game like this than people really dare to in their games. Like that's part of what makes Starfield special. And look, that creates situations that we have to do a lot of work to make sure like this doesn't break, this doesn't create problems. But the the payoff for that and like what players are allowed to do, like wait, I can do this? Like I can spend all my time doing something as ridiculous as this? Yes. Like that's if that's what you want the game to be about, that's what you should do. But we want you to go and push and try all of the different ways because it's really not about like our story or how we want you to play. It's about how you want to play. So when I play, I spend time like I'm going to spend a week and not land on a planet. Like what's it like to just be in outer space, spend all my time in outer space, landing on star stations, derelict ships, doing all this stuff. And then I'll be like, okay, now I'm going to go land in this city and I want to see how long I can spend not leaving this city. Like how many factions can I find? How many quests can I do? And I'll get to decision points where it's like, look, you're about to, like, you have to pick a side here. Yeah. In the co and I'll make a save and, like, I'm going to play this way and I'm going to go two, do two hours down the road just to see, like, how does that feel? And then yeah. rewind and play it two hours the other direction just because, I like, I want to know, like, what should our players expect? Mm -hmm. How does this, and just trying to do that in as many ways as possible. Re just land on a random planet and just start walking. Nice. Like, what's this like? How fun is this? Uh, and the more of it you do, the more you find, like, there is... There's a thousand hours in this version of the game alone. Like if you don't my even gosh. touch it, it, it's it's crazy. And like my one piece of advice to folks is do not ignore your activities. Like yeah. that's almost, okay. it feels like throwaway stuff that the game is giving you. Like there is some amazing stuff in there that doesn't even feel like a real quest, but like will take you to some amazing places and amazing stories. We encourage you to play this like any BGS game, which is like do what you want, go where you want, test the game you know, be the kind of player, the kind of person you want to be in this world and see what happens. I, just, I get chills thinking about what I'm going to get up It's going to be a lot. We cannot wait to see all the <laughs> stories and how people choose to, to express themselves in this game. It's going to be amazing. i got one more question I just have to ask you. Okay. I know you're a fan, but are Arsenal going to win the league? Yes. You heard it here. Thanks again, Pete. Gotta Remember, believe. though, you guys can play Starfield day and day on Xbox Game Pass and PC Game Pass starting September 6th. But if you can't wait that long like me, early access is going to kick off on August the 31st with the Digital Premium Edition, Digital Premium Upgrade, or the Constellation Edition.